Greg Putzer from Oshkosh. I have been retired since 1992, so all I've been doing is collecting beer memorabilia 24-7. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> in 1968 in February of 68 and I know that because that's when I got out of the Navy. When I got out I I guess I was so glad to be out that I started celebrating and I went to a place called Old Town Restaurant on North Main Street in Oshkosh. The building is still there looks very much like it did from 1968 and the ironic part is that's my dentist's office. <laughs> And when I'm in the chair, it's in the same position as where the bar used to be. And the tavern had old, the whole back bar was full of uh, foreign beers. And I had never gotten involved that much in foreign beers, so I thought, well, I'll try, I'll try one. I think it was a bass ale, or maybe it was a harp, or I'm not sure exactly what it was. But I, I, uh, he brought me the bottle, and I looked, and I thought, well, this is really cool. And I had, I don't know, two or three, four beers that night. And I took all the bottles home with me and put them on my chest of drawers. I wasn't married yet. And, and uh, the next time I went out, I did the same thing. And next time I did the same thing. Pretty soon the whole chest of drawers is full of these foreign bottles. And you gotta be my age to remember this, but there was a tavern on the corner of 6th and Nebraska called Judy's Gin Mill. It was a small tavern, but it was really going concern. I don't know if he had go-go dancers in there or not, but it was a very hopping bar. But he had, bottle, he had a bottle collection on his walls all the way around, just something like this. And then he had a fire. And uh, he was, he was going to do a lot of remodeling, and the, the bottle collection wasn't part of the motif. So I went over there and talked to him. And uh, this bottle right here, happened to be sitting on a table and I just picked it up and I'm holding it like a baby and he said wow you must really like beer bottles and I said I love beer bottles so we talked and I we came up to came up with a price of a hundred dollars for his collection and there some of them were pretty bad they were smoke covered and kind of beat up but on the whole they were they were, they were pretty good maybe he had 200 250 or something like that so I took them home and cleaned them up and the good ones went up on, on shelves in my mother. My wife and I went on a lot of trips, but we'd always go on two vacations in the summer and we'd travel all over the United States. We'd, we'd go to grocery stores, restaurants, not so much antique stores, but uh, grocery stores is where I found a lot of stuff because you can go into the, the beer aisle and, and get individual bottles. So she thought it was completely nuts for doing this. She said, I thought we were here to see Pike's Peak and you're, you're collecting bottles. This, I went over to my uncle's house and he was having a sale on a, he was a carpenter. He was, he was selling his uncle's tools. And I, being a woodworker, I was, I was interested in the tools. And he said, I have something else here you might be interested in. And we went into a closet or something down in this basement and he showed me this, this case and it was full of bottles. It was full of, full of these. The same label but in in a long neck. And I couldn't believe it. I, I mean, where would you find something like this? This is probably my my favorite item. This has some special meaning because this came with the original collection. It's a, a ruby red Schlitz. It's not a there were millions of these made, but you just don't see them anymore. And the old Blatt's bottles, they were just they were just more ornate than they are now. They put a lot more into them. I have my favorites change 
by the month, really. Whenever I run up right now, this is my favorite because I just found it. It's terrible, it's in horrible shape, but I found this a day and a half ago in Milwaukee. This one I got fairly recently. It's from 19, it's a 1933 Braumeister. The reason I like it is that there's so many, so much graphics on it. This is an old Oshkosh gilt edge. The label isn't in bad, sh uh, it's a, it is in bad shape, but it's just something that I'm lucky to have. It's from, I believe, around 1908, 1910, somewhere around there. There aren't many of these around. This was given to me by one of my uncles. It's a people's tapper that is in near perfect shape. And the little chief, you just don't see any, any uh, shorties anymore. This is, this is what I grew up with. This is definitely probably my, one of my most favorite things. I went to a, a garage sale a couple of years ago and it, it was all beer. The whole garage was full of beer stuff. And <laughs> there were only five of us waiting at the door. I don't know how that occurred, but as soon as the garage door went open, the guy spotted, one of the guys spotted that sign. He went over and just put his hands right on it. Like, no, you're, no one is gonna get this but me. <laughs> and, but I didn't have to worry about that because I, because I already had it. I also do woodworking, so I, I like to make my own, my own signs, like this Peoples, and the Schlitz, and Miller, and there's other ones. Collecting, I like collecting uh, these, these, these older pictures because it's, it's a good depiction of what, what things used to look like. There are some sp spittoons over here, which you'll see. They're, that's kind of gross, but it, they, were in, they were in taverns. So it's, uh, and these pictures here, these are the people that represent this whole collection. Then, and, and they're kind of living on in my collection. History is uh, history is wherever you look in this room. Um, I guess that's why I do it. That's why I'll always do it. People say, where can you go? Well, there's rafters. So there's there's always room for more. So at the point we are, this this is this is where I'm at so far. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it's I'm nowhere near finished. Mm -hmm.